Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this two-part video, you should be able to describe the features of globular proteins. You should then be able to describe how the structures of three globular proteins are linked to their functions. So far in this topic, we've had a good look at the structure of proteins. Now, one key idea you need to understand is that the structure of any protein is critical to its function. Scientists divide proteins into two very broad groups based on their structure. These groups are called globular proteins and fibrous proteins. And in this video, we're looking at globular proteins. I'm showing you the simplified structure of a globular protein here. As you can see, globular proteins tend to have an approximately spherical shape. Now, the key feature of globular proteins is that they're soluble in water, and you have to be able to explain why. We've already seen that some amino acids have got R groups which are attracted to water. These are called hydrophilic amino acids. Globular proteins have got hydrophilic amino acids on their surface. This means that the hydrophilic R groups can interact with water molecules, and this makes globular proteins soluble in water. Other amino acids have got R groups which are not attracted to water, and these are called hydrophobic amino acids. In globular proteins, we find the hydrophobic amino acids deep in the centre of the protein, well away from any water molecules. Coming up, we're going to look at the structure of the globular protein haemoglobin. Okay, now if you're following the OCR biology spec, then you need to be able to describe how the structures of three globular proteins link to their functions. But even if you're not following the OCR spec, then I would still try to get the general ideas, as they'll help you gain a deeper understanding of biology. We're going to start with haemoglobin, and in the next video, we look at insulin and an enzyme. Okay, now haemoglobin is a globular protein with four polypeptide subunits. Two are called the alpha subunits, and two are called the beta subunits. Now we find haemoglobin in red blood cells, and the function of haemoglobin is to bind reversibly to oxygen. Haemoglobin binds to oxygen in the lungs, and then it releases the oxygen in the body tissues. Now a key feature of haemoglobin is that each subunit contains the prosthetic group heme, and this means that haemoglobin is an example of a conjugated protein. Each heme group contains an Fe2 plus ion, and this is where the oxygen binds. So this means that one haemoglobin molecule can bind to four oxygen molecules. Now haemoglobin has a really interesting feature. When oxygen attaches to haemoglobin, the quaternary structure of the protein changes slightly, and this makes it easier for more oxygen to attach. We'll be looking at how haemoglobin carries oxygen in much more detail in later videos. In the next video, we look at the structures of two more globular proteins.